I had been on the phone with my then boyfriend, and he said something that made me think he was chauvinistic, not a nice person. And I remember telling him that if he knew anything about me, he knew exactly where I was going to go. And I hung up the phone and got in my car. I drove to the park. The sun was kind of down below the tree line, but it wasn't dark yet, and I pulled into the parking lot. I thought it was weird that there were two cars pulled side by side and talking to each other. When I got out, the guy in the truck just stared at me in a horrible way, you know? When someone just looks at you like they're looking through you as if you don't exist. I thought, well, this is weird. It's late and no one's ever here. And then I thought, whatever, they're leaving. I don't care, I have my own problems. I took my keys with me because I didn't want a big purse banging around. I headed across the field, which you have to cross through to get to the woods because there's no trail. I was taking my time and calming down, and I realized that it got really quiet. I didn't hear the birds and the squirrels anymore. I just heard something big moving through the woods. I thought to myself, maybe it's a dog. And then I heard voices. The first voice is a male's voice, and he said, I know I saw her go in this way. She couldn't have gotten far. Then a second voice comes, and it's quieter, and it says, Shh, she'll hear you. Okay, so there are two men in the woods, and they're looking for something, obviously. I kept thinking, it must be their dog. They must have lost their dog. And then I thought they wouldn't try to sneak up on it. I stood there frozen, because that's the kind of person I am. I could hear them getting closer to me. And I don't know how long I stood there waiting for them to get to me, but I was completely frozen. And then I heard the other voice. It was a distorted, like if you heard someone talking through a closed door or underwater. You could understand what they were saying, but the voice wasn't right. It wasn't in my head because it had a volume and a pitch that changed. My thoughts definitely don't do that. I could almost feel where it was coming from. It was coming from behind me and a little above me, like it was taller than me. It said, go to the river now. I don't know if I was more scared of the fact that there's some disembodied voice talking to me or that there's two men in the woods. I listened to the voice because I didn't really have any other option. I took off toward the river. I made a ton of noise because I was going as fast as I could and the voice came back and said, I got to the river and jumped down the embankment. I squished myself against it, squeezing down into the smallest, tightest ball I could. The voice kept telling me to stay, and I just sat there, hoping whoever was in the woods was going to leave and that I wasn't having some kind of breakdown. And I kept hearing them move through the woods, and I could tell they had split off. As I sat there, the voice kept telling me to stay and quiet over and over again like it was trying to comfort me. I could hear what sounded like someone was right above me and if I leaned out they could see me but I had to look. I just tilted my head up a tiny bit and I could see the tips of the construction boots hanging over the edge and I could see hanging next to them this dirty old rope just swinging next to them. I don't think I even thought anything. I was so scared. I just tried not to breathe. It felt like hours, but I know it couldn't have been that long. The voice was even completely silent. There was nothing but me hearing this man's breathing. He started to walk away at some point and the voice kept telling me to wait. So I waited and finally the voice said, go now to the field, go now. It was screaming at me so loud, so I ran through the woods and just got out to the field, far, far from the cars and streets. I could see the parking lot, but it was so far away. I'm running, and I start hearing footsteps running, and first, they're further away, but they're so much faster than I am, barreling after me, and there was nothing. I fully expected to see at least one of the men, but there it was, silent. The only thing I could think 
was that the footsteps must have belonged to the voice. And I hear it again screaming at the top of its lungs that I need to run right now. And the footsteps come back, and they're in pace with mine, running next to me through the field. I had a thousand crazy thoughts because none of this made any sense. Finally, I get to my car, and I see both the cars were parked in different places with nobody in them. I refuse to look behind me. If there hadn't been a voice, I would probably be a missing person's case. It got me out of there.